Yep. Mm -hmm. I wish I could see it before. I don't even know what that is. That's not existent. My friends watching on YouTube, I do apologize. This is my rowdy fourth hour class. Yay, and so, yeah, would you go ahead and pan around the room so uh, that my my viewers can see who we're dealing with? Him especially. <laughs> I didn't do anything. So yeah, we try to get through with some chemistry in here. Try and then we try. But you see who's in the room. Okay. So anyway, talking about two different rate, two different ways of expressing a rate law. Um, I made a big deal about this yesterday, and of course, in the reading assignment, it did try to make a big deal of it too. You can't look at a chemical equation and tell anything about how fast it goes, even if it has nice big coefficients, like a 25 for a coefficient. It doesn't mean it's a fast reaction. That just gives the mole ratio of the product's reactants. Um, you have to run the experiment several times, varying the concentration to be able to determine anything about the rate. So just be aware of that. The, the, the chemical equation does nothing for us to find the rate law. All right. You need to be given concentration versus time data to be able to find the integrated rate law. So if I go back here, this one is the one we're going to do first. I know differential came first, but we're going to talk about integration first. On Thursday, we'll be doing a lab, uh, and it's going to have you finding an integrated rate law because you're going to be able to measure concentration versus time. And how do we measure the concentration versus time? That is by use of a spectrometer, which uh, I'll show you, but we'll talk about tomorrow. Thursday. So the lab has a write-up. It's going to be due on Friday. James? What's that? You could today. Yeah, I'll uh, go over a couple with you today. So yeah, you can start. Sixteen. Two weeks from today, Tuesday. Tuesday the sixteenth. Quiz is that Friday. So are we gonna have like the two labs tomorrow? We're gonna have two labs. We're gonna have one on Thursday and then one mid next week. The one mid next week is not gonna have a write up. That part's nice. Yay! Yeah. Okay. And that would, when I told you that uh, you're not going to be able to really understand anything or be able to explain anything, here we go. Uh, you're going to see that I'm telling you the experiment shows it's a first order. What does that mean to be a first order reaction? Here's what it means. Now listen to this. Um, because this really comes down, there's lots of different ways of finding this. But ultimately, if this is a first order reaction, what that means is if I take this concentration and double it, the rate will double. It'll go twice as fast. That's what first order means. If it's a second order reaction, if I double this, it'll go four times as fast, two squared. If I triple the concentration, it'll go nine times faster. That's a second order reaction. So second order means that whatever change I have uh, applied to this concentration, that change squared will be uh, the rate of the reaction. First order means whatever change I apply to the concentration of the reactant, that same change will happen to the rate. If I double this, the rate doubles. If I cut this in half, the rate gets cut in half. Also, oh, in other order of the T. How does this concentration affect the rate? That's what the order means. Yep. You can also have zero order. If this is a zero order reaction, that means that if I cut the concentration of this in half, it doesn't affect the rate. It's still the same rate. If I double the concentration of this, or multiply it by 10, it's still the same rate. So zero order means that the rate does not affect, or is not affected by the concentration of the reaction. So you can have zero order, first order, or second order. Uh, so Mathematically, it's possible to have third order, but third order reactions are not likely. And we're going to find out 
physically what that means uh, later on. It's going to take us a week or so to talk about what really is happening to cause these orders. Yeah. So it would be like the coefficient to the n power and n power being the number of orders. So if it's like second order, so it would yes. be two to and the Not the coefficient, though. It's going to be the concentration oh. to the n power. Yeah, the power is the order. Yeah, James? Okay. The two doesn't matter anyway for the rate of the reaction. Um, zero order means that if I change the concentration, it doesn't affect the rate. The, the concentration is not affecting the rate. If it's first order, that means that if I double the concentration, the rate doubles too. Whatever I do to the concentration, the same thing happens to the rate. If it's second order, whatever I do to the concentration, that change squared is what happens to the rate. So if I cut this in half, if it's second order, the rate goes down by four. Follow? Yeah. So yeah, that's what the order is. Now, oh. if you didn't quite catch that, we'll talk a lot about that, but there's a time for that later on. We're just going to be worried about finding the order right now, even though we don't really know so much what order means. The name. What, so is it like a direct relationship, yeah, I guess? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a slope of one. It can be like two, for example. For example, if you double it here, then it'll go quadruple here. Put it here, it'll go six times faster. Yep. Right. Okay. Zero order might cause equilibrium. No, it doesn't have anything to do with equilibrium. Uh, zero order just means that the concentration of the reactant doesn't affect the rate. The rate's going to be whatever it is, regardless of how concentrated this thing is. Okay. All right. So we have. Um, this slide, this is going to be kind of wacky. I'm going to do a little derivation. If you haven't had calculus yet, I just want you to smile and nod your head like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. And I'll never know. You don't have to. There's two things I want you to write down. I'll tell you what they are in a second. Okay? So you can just take a break from writing this down. You don't have Unless you just love deriving things in the calculus. You should also go ahead and write it down. <laughs> okay, so it's okay if you don't, because ultimately we really don't need to know how we get these things, but I want to show you just so you know where they come from. So this thing right here represents the rate of the reaction. The rate of the reaction is how fast that's going down over time. That's a rate. That's equal to this thing, which is shows that it's a first order reaction, because it has a k value. And you saw this in the reading uh, assignment from yesterday. There's the rate constant times the concentration to the first power. And remember, if you double the this, the rate doubles because it's 2 to the first power. Or 2 times that to the first power. Should I call That's Benny fine. Gregory? What? Should I call Benny Gregory? The Cal God? I, I think it's Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this relationship right here. This is a rate and this is a rate, so they're equal to each other. The first order rate law looks like this. We haven't done those yet, but that's what it would look like. I'm going to take these and uh, put the N205 concentration terms all on one side, everything else on the other side. So uh, we'll do it down here. Oh, you see that I've changed my deltas, too, into Ds. Yeah. How does the delta change? Why did the it's delta the change into Ds? They really are the same thing, they're just calculus. changes. And yeah, in calculus you use D's, not delta. They really represent change though, both of them do. Okay, so anyway, uh, I'll take this N205 and put it over here with the DN205. So when I divide out the N205, it's going to be 1 over concentration N205. DN205. That negative sign is going to go over to the other side with the DT. So on the other side, it's going to look like negative k dt. OK, let me see a smile and nod. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, I, I followed. The next thing that we'll do, integrate both sides. Let's integrate. That's what it's talking about in time interval. I'm going to go out of the Let's use the multiplication rule, guys. 
Wait, what is that? So that's from is zero it? to T. Oh. T being What's some that? amount of time. We've watched this reaction changing over some amount of time, from, zero, from the beginning to some T. You like this, Lana? James? Wait, wait, wait. Shh. James? Yes, I'm sorry. My T doesn't look very good. Yep. They have to be over the same time interval. Both sides do. All right. Lana. Oh, no. Not Lana. I mean, you can answer anyway. We'll integrate the right side first because that's simple. What's the integral of dt? T. Just T. Wait. Right. It would be 1 dt was the integral of 1. It was, it's just, yeah. yeah. So wait, we're just taking the dn all pi of n dt as just 1? Oh. Or negative 1? Because <laughs> you're just saying the case equal to 1 over n2 o pi, right? What happened to the dn all pi? I didn't say k was equal to the n k n o what? Because see, you divided you divided n two o five. I right? divided that out. Yeah. So then, where the d n o five and the d t terms go? In the integral. That's right there. The d n two o five is right there. Oh. The d t is right there. Okay, sorry. I left by changing. I well, this is a differential equation. I just put the. Uh, okay, sorry, I didn't see the that. Two changing terms on one on each side. Okay. Did you get the negative. There is a negative sign right there. Yeah. It's there. I I didn't leave it out. So. You know that the negative k is a constant can come out of the integral. So the integral of dt is just t. And it would be t at time t, which is just t, minus t at time 0. What is time 0? 0. It's the beginning of the reaction, the initial point of the reaction before anything happens. So over here, it's just going to look like this. Equals negative k. That was out of the um, integral times t. Remember, it was minus t0, which is just 0. Over here, Lima, what is the integral of 1 over n205? Ln n05. Oh, that was from Lima. Oh, OK. Wait, it's all n205 times n n I was depending on you. We have, yeah, <laughs> we have to do natural law. Because yeah. that's what the integral of uh, an inverse. Good. Now, we do have the uh, concentration of N2O5, the natural log of the concentration, at times t minus the natural log of the concentration at time 0. Now, would the concentration at time 0 be 0 for the reactant? No, absolutely. No, it's going to have. This thing is going to have some concentration at, at the beginning. And then as the reaction proceeds, this number is going to go down. But it is definitely something at the beginning. You can't just leave it out, like we could for the time. Over here on this right side of the equation, the time, at time 0, time is 0. It's just 0. So you're subtracting 0. That means nothing. But at time 0, this value does have a value. And so it, we can't just leave it out. So the, Integral of the inverse of N205 is the natural log of N205 at some time t minus the natural log of N205 at time 0 equals negative kt. Yeah. What about dn05? Is that just going to like disappear because it's a constant? Yes. Right. Just disappears. We don't add, um, yeah, I, you know how normally in calculus you add plus some arbitrary constant. We don't. Normally we call we it don't. C. We don't. You don't. Wait, and I'm not going to either. Even though we, we are going to have, well, you'll see in a second, and I'll come back and talk about this. All right, this thing is going to be rearranged just a tiny little bit. I'm going to take that natural log of that term and put it over on the other side. So since it's being subtracted here, I need to add it to both sides to move it over. And it looks like this. Whoops. I'm going to put my shade up. I want you to look at that for a moment. That was just moving the ln of n205 0 over to the other side by adding it. Should we write this down? Um, no. I'll tell you what I want you to write down. 
What do we see right here? That and that. Uh, the k value is a constant.